What does 2,000 year old cheese have to do with a head transplant coming out of China? Find out after this. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. Today I'm gonna dive right into some of the news stories that I have found interesting for this week. First and foremost, I give you the Plex Media Server has officially going to be supported on the Nvidia Shield. The Nvidia Shield is like a stream box that you can put in your living room. It's small, it's powerful, it's nice, it's now apparently a media server. So I'm only talking about this because I am totally into Plex and I love things like these. It's just cool. Um, here's the thing. I would love to test this out. I would really, really love to put it through its paces and see exactly what it's capable of. The only thing is I don't really need a Nvidia Shield. Now they're about 180 bucks, you know, plus tax, you're looking at $200. So you know, they're, they're kind of expensive if you don't need it, but they're not terribly expensive if you want something that's going to play, you know, videos on your TV and hook up to your TV and also be a Plex Media server. So that's kind of interesting. I tried to find a way to get a hold of NVIDIA to maybe contact one of their, you know, marketing department reps or something to see if maybe I could be loaned a device, but I'm not really finding the proper email for the contact for that. So as of right now, I don't really, uh, I don't think I'll be testing that anytime soon even though I would love to dive into that see what it's capable of see what it can handle and just you know put it through its paces and see if it's a value to the standard everyday Plex user now this next segment is basically stemming off the whole Apple WWDC thing that just happened today today is Monday for me um, June 13th so the WWDC was kind of a letdown, honestly. I mean, it was basically about emojis and Siri updates and eh, nothing really exciting. And to be honest with you, I'm not really following all of the Apple stuff as much as I used to, or the iPhone stuff as much as I used to, just because, I don't know, I just kind of lost my, my excitement for the new iPhones. Uh, I still use them, and I still want an iPhone 7 whenever it comes out. I'm just not, like, all tweaked out about it anymore. Aside from that, all the announcements that they did a man walked out of an Apple store with 19 iPhones just because he dressed as an Apple employee, which is hilarious. I know it's not regular Apple news. If you want to watch Apple news, I'm sure there's plenty of stuff out there. People cover it. I just thought this was hilarious. And the funniest thing is, is that this is actually a reoccurring thing. I mean, they're going through here and saying that people have stolen $44,000 worth of, of uh, iPhones or iDevices. I mean, this is... This is a common thing, especially in stores where they do a lot of training. So it's freaking hilarious that, you know, these people just, the balls, the balls that you need to do this are just huge balls, just like giant buffalo testicle sized balls. To actually walk into the store, steal $44,000 worth of iPhones and walk out like you own the place. Like, peace. Speaking of something completely unrelated, I give you a 2,000 year old ball of cheese that was found and is still technically good. I don't think that I would, I don't think that I could get paid enough to eat this, but they're saying 2,000 years old, it's called bog butter. They're, they found it in this area where it's normal for, you know, storage of cheeses and things like that. And they think it was some kind of religious thing where they, you know, made an offering of what was valuable at the time, which just happened to be this, you know, bog butter or cheese. But either way, they discovered it 2,000 years later, it is still, technically edible yeah let me know in the comments if you are kind of one of those you know experience new things type of people do you think you would actually try a 2000 year old cheese if it was tested and confirmed by a scientist or a doctor or whoever the hell would you know test that do you think that you would actually try a 2000 year old cheese i mean i don't know it's kind of eh, you know not really sure Kind of on the fence. As disturbing as this is, this other segment is pretty disturbing. It's basically a new website dedicated for use by employers or landlords that essentially allows them to dig through your entire online presence and give that information to either your landlord or somebody trying to hire you on like this easy to read platter of crap basically saying if you've ever used anything like you know you you they're saying here like loan pregnant 
uh, libertarian. I mean, it, a bunch of different keywords. You know, if you use things like you know racial slurs, probably uh, lots of curse words. You know, violence. I would imagine. I mean, it's basically. They dig through everything. They find everything that you've ever sent a message through, you've ever replied to, you've ever taken part of, uh, pages that you follow or comment on or inter uh, interface with. I mean, this is a huge, a huge violation of privacy. I mean, beyond anything you can ever imagine. And it kind of makes me, it kind of makes me wonder how many people would actually do that because in here they're saying that a large amount of people are willing to give up a large portion of their privacy if not all of their privacy if it's in exchange for something that they really want so on the surface you have to ask yourself okay I don't want to do that that's absurd there's no freaking way I'm not gonna let somebody just run and throw all my shit but you gotta think about the right circumstance what if and let's just let's paint a picture right here what if you're applying for your job? And I don't know what you're paid right now, but let's just say you make $45,000 a year as it stands right now. You're applying for a job that you are qualified to be at for many, many years, potentially to retire from. I mean, we're talking about a lifelong job. And this new job pays you $150,000 per year. $150,000 from $45,000, right? $105,000 a year raise for this new job. And to get that job, that company came to you and they said, give us access to your Twitters, your Instagram, your Facebook, everything that you have. Give us the password for everything. We'll call you in five days and let you know if you're hired. Would you do that? Would you give up your privacy for a job like that? I'm really curious to know what you would do. Because the reason why I'm curious is because I'm thinking about it. And I, th I almost think I would. Ooh, kind of gives me a, a chill just thinking about it. But now, if it's just a basic job, let's say if I make forty-five now and I got another job and it's fifty thousand, or maybe it's an equal amount of forty-five thousand a year. Hell no, go f yourself, right? Not a, not a chance. Not gonna happen. I mean, I got to be pretty damn desperate to give up that kind of information. And it's not like I'm hiding anything. It's more the principle of the matter. I don't want them rummaging through my shit. It's just not going to happen. So would you do it for something like that? Three times your wage, 150000 from 45000 Would you give up all of your privacy to do it? Let me know in the comments. I really want to know, out of all the questions I asked today, I want to know what you would do. Would you give up your privacy for a job that like that that would pay you three times as much as your current job right now that could potentially be a lifelong career that you could retire from? Let me know. As for poop storing data, a little misleading, but not necessarily. Basically, this group of scientists are using CRISPR to modify and transform bacteria, or to be more specific, E. coli, because it's a bacteria that grows really fast. Essentially, they're modifying it to store data. Now, this is not like oh, DNA storage, where you can store trillions of, of bits or whatever. Like, No, this is like 11 bits originally. Then they knocked it up to 100 bits. I mean... It's not a huge increase or massive amount of storage space, but basically what they're doing here is they're, they are taking a bacteria's ability to fight off viruses and remember how to do it in the future. And then that information is encoded into the DNA of the bacteria, and then it grows and multiplies, and it maintains that data. So they're using that virus infection thing to somehow encode the instructions or the data or the bits onto the bacteria and then let it replicate itself through this technology and this title is saying it's like the future of biological hard drives eh, you know you're talking about a hundred bytes of data through some seriously complicated steps to store this data so I really do not see this being any kind of a viable solution anytime soon like no way anytime soon however what I was thinking with this kind of technology, if they can make this to where you can store data in DNA from this fake virus infection, and this data would stay with the DNA, that might be an interesting way to secure people's future or something. Kind of like generational time capsule thing. It's like, hey, we learned all this stuff in our time alive, and now we're almost extinct, so we're just gonna program this into your DNA. So when humans evolve again and they start looking at their own DNA, they say, hey, this is actually information we can use on how to cure cancer or this is information on how to whatever. Yeah, 
far-fetched, sci- you know, sci-fi, whatever. Interesting nonetheless. And that's it. Speaking of interesting, a Chinese doctor wants to perform the world's first head transplant on a human being. It's actually in planning. There's actually people signing up for it for one reason or another. Wow. I mean, they did this on a monkey. I think I covered it, actually, but they did this on a monkey already. And the monkey survived, I think, for three hours. It looked like it was in agony. They euthanized the damn thing because it was suffering and just other ethical reasons. But they still did it, and it still technically survived. The only thing is is that you know, you cut off a head and you reattach blood vessels, and that's great. You have a body that could sustain somebody's head to let them live. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you can allow them to use that body and function like a normal human being. I mean... Hell, right now, if you get paralyzed, I mean, we don't even have the technology to repair the the nerves that connect through your spinal cord as it is to make people walk again or whatever. So what makes us think that we can cut a head off somebody and put it on somebody else and make them walk? I don't understand that. This doctor is getting a lot of criticism for it, but it's they're basically saying here that in China, when they do this type of stuff, they don't really give a shit about the rest of the world. Screw you. We're doing it no matter what. So who knows? It might be successful. The guy might die. The guy that signed up for it is already paralyzed from the neck down, and I think he's old. I think he's like 80. No, oh, no, he's 62. Basically 80. But it's an old guy who's paralyzed, and he's just like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to go out with a bang, you know? Put my head on somebody else. Make it a young one, you know? Whatever. This next segment, if you are allergic to peanuts, you might actually like. This is the next and the last segment. They've essentially found what it is that causes uh, allergies from peanuts. What they did is they narrowed it down from peanuts to like, you know, things like soy, uh, soybeans. So they compared them as far as the genes incorporated with, you know, the plant. And they found what people are actually allergic to. And now they're working on a way to potentially make a peanut that is genetically modified that does not give people with peanut allergies allergic reactions. Wow. That's pretty crazy because they go in here and they say like, what is it? Two out of three. Okay. Two out of three. Wow. Not even close. 1% of Americans and 3% of Australians are thought to be allergic to the protein rich snack peanuts. But it begs the question, what will they taste like? Will they taste different? Will it be a standard for all new peanuts planted everywhere? Just in case anyone else has a peanut allergy? Is it even true? I don't know. The point is, science is cool, and for the 1% of people who cannot enjoy a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, this is gonna be their savior. Hallelujah, praise science. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at underscore bite my bits. Like and subscribe to this video below, and have a good day.